The responsibility of Combat Support Unit was essentially to support the air bridge into Afghanistan. We also ran the life support at Al Minhad Air Base, and that is essentially accommodation, catering, medical. I had a physical training instructor, uh, firefighting, vehicle mechanics, aviation safety, refueling, essentially everything that you need to keep the aircraft moving backwards and forwards between um, the UAE and Afghanistan. I had a detachment in Tarankout and Kandahar. They were airload team, a small airload team in both locations, where as the aircraft arrived, they would um, get the manage the uh, the passengers disembarking and also taking the pallets off and breaking the pallets down and making the equipment available to the uh, soldiers at the destination. I guess the function, the life support function at Al Minhad was it was very important but it was very repetitive. Every day was the same but it was important that every day was the same. It was important that that our team rely, reliably delivered um, everything that was needed to keep that base ticking, keep it running like clockwork. The advice that I gave my team uh, before we left and regularly while we were there was that whilst their job may be routine, mundane, um, not terribly dangerous or exciting, they needed to remain focused on the fact that the people that were passing through our base were soldiers and airmen that were about to head into the, um, the front line. And they were, more often than not, they were afraid, they were nervous, they were anxious about what lies ahead. Moving a uh, task force into theatre is a very, very complicated undertaking. The, the timing has to be right. The, the equipment has to be um, brought into theatre in the right sequence. The specialists need to be brought into theatre in the right sequence. And although my unit wasn't controlling the sequencing of this, we did have to make sure that when things were uh, required in theatre, the pallets need to be packed in the correct order, the timing had to be right. Part of my team um, built the, the uh, pallets to be loaded into the aircraft. We were responsible for building the, the pallets that basically um, had the soldiers' kits, the ammunition, very importantly the mail, um, into theatre. And those pallets needed to be built. It's very, very hard work, manual labour, a lot of lifting. And when you're working in 50 degrees, uh, you obviously don't have uh, a lot of capacity to work um, past about 15 minutes. We had to be really careful that we rotated our people um, in and out of the heat into um, a cold environment to basically to get their body heat down. When they were out on the tarmac, they wore vests that were full of frozen water. Um, we'd rotate these vests. They'd only last about, as I said, 15 minutes, and they'd be completely melted. Sometimes we would try and uh, build the pallets at night when it was colder uh, or cooler, and then um, minimise the amount of time the teams had on the tarmac during the day. Mail, my goodness, very important. Don't mess with the mail. Um, it was essential. It was the lifeline and people rely on it, um, not only for the letters from home, but also the little morsels of Australian chocolate and Tim Tams and all of those things that uh, that families at home would send. And it wasn't even the families that would send it. We would get mail from school children, 
from RSLs, from complete strangers. And they would have um, little mementos in them. And just getting those things from people back in Australia made um, so much difference to the morale. Downtime, well, as a commanding officer, I had very little downtime. But we did try and organise um, activities to keep people from going stir crazy. We had uh, volleyball competitions, we had movie nights. We were very fortunate to get some fantastic acts come through, um, singers, comedians. So that was um, you know, a wonderful break from the monotony. But one of the most dangerous activities on the base um, that I had the highest injury rate from was Zumba. The PTI decided he'd run some Zumba classes and the girls were really excited about that, um, but there was a lot of injuries from the guys who were watching the Zumba when they should have been paying more attention to the weightlifting. We had uh, uh, a couple of broken fingers, a couple of broken toes, a degloved finger. So we had to stop the Zumba classes. The Australians, my team, were, were very clever. And I think that's why we were recognised at doing such a good job and doing the job so well, was that we have uh, intelligent and well-trained people who went out there and were told what the job was we needed to get done and then were left to get on and do it. Uh, I remember there were uh, several unfortunate occasions when we had ramp ceremonies um, at Al Minhad and that's when the remains of soldiers that had been killed in the theatre um, we're passing through our base and we would show our respect by coming out onto the tarmac and lining up and basically creating a passage for them um, onto the aircraft. And on those days, there was one, it was 54 degrees on the tarmac. And part of me was grateful for the heat because the sweat that it caused, you know, 90, 95% humidity and or greater, it uh, helped disguise the tears um, as they were running down your face, mixed in with the sweat that was running down your face. It was hard. The experience has had a long-term um, effect on me. I was so privileged to have the opportunity to command on operations. It gave me uh, a great sense of purpose, a feeling that I trained for 30 years and then actually got to do what I'd trained for for so long. Why did I volunteer to go? I guess that's a question that would be strange to answer for a lot of people in the Defence Force. We join the Defence Force to serve our country. We train for years and years to be given the opportunity to do something like this. So when I had the opportunity to put my hand up and say, I want to go and do this job, the thought of not doing it just doesn't even enter into your, um, into your mind. It's like, this is the reason I've been in the Defence Force for all these years. This is what I've been training for. This is how I serve my country. And uh, I am fortunate I have a husband and three children who understand my commitment and were very, very supportive and quite happy to say, Mum, off you go. You go and do this. This is very important and we'll be here waiting for you when you get back.